Hello everybody. In this presentation, we're going to take a look at Playmaker. Uh, Playmaker is a third party tool that integrates with Unity. It's going to make development of games a lot more user friendly. Um, we're going to take a look at uh, downloading and installing Playmaker. Uh, we'll configure Playmaker and then talk about some of the basics. So to get started, I'm going to jump into Unity. Now I have the Unity Hub open and I'll just explain a couple details about what we're looking at. Um, so inside the Unity Hub, this is a great place, a great tool to use to manage different versions of Unity, um, different installs of Unity, and different projects. You can see I have several projects that are actually in the cloud. That's why they're, they're grayed out. Um, if I go to installs, you can see that I have multiple versions of Unity installed. I'm going to focus on the 2019.3.15. If you're using um, any flavor of 2019.3, um, you don't need to update necessarily. Um, this should all work with 2019.4, um, but it's untested on my part, so I'm going to focus on 2019.3.15. Um, so I'm going to jump over to projects. I'm going to establish a project, and this is going to be a new project exclusively for the purpose of sandbox or, or, or playing around experimenting with Playmaker. Um, and it's a good practice whenever you're using a, a third-party asset for the first time until you understand how it works. Do it in a new project so you don't inadvertently uh, modify the, the directory of an existing project or, or you know, do some inadvertent um, uh, damage or restructuring to a different project. So um, because I have multiple versions of Unity, I have this little drop-down menu here, and if I click on that, it'll allow me to choose a new project for a specific version. So I'm gonna choose 2019.3.15, make sure I'm using a 3D project. I'm gonna call this Playmaker, or Playmaker Test, or Playmaker Sandbox, whatever you wanna call it, and I'm saving to my desktop. I'm gonna hit Create, <clears throat> and while that's creating, while Unity is generating the files that it needs, I'm gonna jump into my browser and I'm gonna to go to the Unity Asset Store. It's, uh, we can Google Unity Asset Store or we can go to assetstore.unity.com. This all assumes that you've purchased a license for Playmaker through the Asset Store. I'll cover an alternate version where if you bought it directly from uh, the developer or have an existing Playmaker package, how you would install that. Um, we'll cover that a little bit after the, uh, a little bit later after the initial install here. So, it's important that I'm logged in because that gives me access to all of my assets. Now, I could click on my assets and then look through my library of everything that I've purchased. I have quite a bit of assets. Um, so instead of searching for this, I'm just gonna do a quick search, um, either through the general catalog or, or in my assets, and I'm just gonna search for Playmaker. I can see that Playmaker is here. Uh, it's grayed out because I've purchased several licenses of this before, and I'm going to click on it. Um, yours might say download before open in Unity. So we, we often download it first and then open it, but because I have a current version that's been downloaded, uh, it's just saying open in Unity. So the easiest way to get an asset from uh, the asset store into an existing Unity project is by having your uh, Unity target project open going to your web browser and going to the asset store and choosing to open or download if you need to, but then open in Unity. It's prompting me to make sure that I'm allowed to switch to the application. I just said, okay, it's going to take a moment. Um, it's searching for um, access to this uh, Playmaker package. Now, what just happened is Unity opened up the package manager. Um, we can manually open the package manager by going to window, package manager, and we could look for uh, any assets that belong to us. We can search for the asset. Um, sometimes your assets don't um, show up right away. Sometimes it's easier just to get them from the website. Uh, but if we want to do it uh, directly through the package manager, you would choose Window, Package Manager, and then assuming you've already purchased Playmaker, you could just do a quick search for Playmaker and it'll show up here. Um, so what we want to do is whether we've activated it from the web browser or whether we found this in our package manager uh, with Playmaker selected, I'm going to go down here and hit this import button. So let me take this, take this out of uh, 
the nested, uh, make sure it's not docked with other windows here and just make this a little bit smaller so maybe we can see this a little bit more clearly. So Playmaker's highlighted. It's given me some links to the developer website, maybe some help files, some thumbnails of Playmaker, um, but I also have this import button. Again, if import's not highlighted, chances are you have to download it first, but I'm gonna hit import because it's ready to go. So this is a, a there's a couple steps in this process. We wanna hit import, and then we get this Playmaker uh, dialog box here with a list of assets. We're gonna hit import. What that's gonna do is it's gonna unpackage uh, some assets. Um, it opens up this splash screen. I'll just move this towards the center. Now we wanna install Playmaker. I'll hit install. Uh, there's a pre-update check. We can skip that and just click on the install Playmaker. I'm gonna click on this and it's prompting me to make sure that, I, that I've made a backup. Um, it's okay because this project, haven't worked on it. It's a brand new project. I'm gonna go ahead and say I made a backup. And once all these assets unpackage, uh, you see that we have another import window. So I'm gonna click on import. And once that's done extracting all these assets, we should be good to go with Playmaker. And the way that we can confirm that that we have Playmaker and we've gone through the entire process of installing it is that we should end up with a Playmaker drop-down menu in the Unity uh, menu, the Unity application menu here. And once this is completely done importing, uh, we can click on the Playmaker drop-down menu and we should not see anything grayed out. So we should have several options here, including the Playmaker editor and editor windows. Uh, and everything in the root here should be should not be grayed out, kind of like we see over here. Um, so as long as we have access to this drop-down menu, we're good to go with Playmaker. I'm going to close this little splash screen, even though there's some valuable uh, you know tutorials and, and helper files in here. I'm just going to close that, and I don't need my package manager open, so I'm going to close that. Now this is the process for installing Playmaker if you purchase it through the Asset Store. There's a couple of other ways to get um, a license of Playmaker. Um, the best way to manage this is through the Asset Store, but in the event that you purchased it directly from the developer, which is an option, um, Hutong Games uh, will have provided you with a download link uh, for Playmaker. Um, they should have sent that through the email if you went through that store. And uh, just to emulate this, I'm going to go to my Playmaker download link and I'm gonna let this download and now I have a separate Playmaker package. Again, we don't need to do this if we purchased it through the Asset Store, but I just wanna walk you through the process in the event that you purchased it directly from uh, the developer. So I've gone to my downloads folder where I've downloaded the Playmaker package. You'll notice that it's zipped, so I'm going to double click or right click on it to unzip it. And I'll double click uh, just to show you the contents of this. Now there's, there's a whole bunch of different Playmaker packages, and you can see that there's a version for Unity 5, Unity 5.4, 2017, and 2018 and up. So we actually don't need these previous versions. Um, currently at the time of this video, uh, we're looking for the 2018.3 package of Playmaker or better. Um, so I've downloaded that and unzipped it. It's in my download folder. And the, the way that I would go through installing this, it's the exact same process uh, as getting it through the asset store once we get the asset into Unity. And the way that we would do that is we can go to the asset dropdown menu, choose to import package, import a custom package, and now we're gonna to navigate to, uh, in this case, it would be my downloads folder, inside the unzipped Playmaker folder, and then I would get the latest version. In this case, again, it's 2018.3, so it works with any version. Uh, newer than that, I'll hit open, and it takes us to the same process that we looked at from downloading it through the Asset Store. Mine's grayed out, I can import it again, but it's all grayed out because it's letting me know that I've already imported these assets. So I'm gonna close that. That's the process of downloading and installing Playmaker. I'm gonna go through really quickly how to configure Playmaker uh, 
on screen inside Unity so that we're kind of all working with the same interface. Uh, and then we'll talk about the basics of Playmaker in the next presentation. So uh, just really quickly in order to uh, activate Unity or configure Unity to, uh, or excuse me, configure Playmaker to use inside Unity, I'm gonna go to the Playmaker drop-down menu and I'm gonna start with the Playmaker editor window. Uh, once I choose the editor, I still get this splash screen that, that pops up. I could say, turn this off at startup, but I'll just close that. It shouldn't pop up again until the next time I'm in. I quit and relaunch this. Um, so we have a Playmaker window, and you'll notice that there's a tab that says Playmaker here. Um, I'll explain what the, the interface is and the layout is uh, in the next presentation, but now I just want to configure this. And the way that I'm going to recommend that we configure this is that we take the Playmaker tab, and as I drag this around, you can see that it wants to snap to different areas inside the Unity interface. And I'm going to drag my Playmaker and snap it to the right side, so this kind of vertical rule here, to the right side of my project uh, folder or my project window. So I'm going to grab the Playmaker tab, drag it down and snap it over to the right. So in effect, what I have is then the left side of my window, I can see my project tab. In fact, I'll drag this over a bit. On the right side of the bottom of the screen, I have my Playmaker editor window. Uh, and that goes all the way over here to this vertical rule where we see our inspector. Okay, I'm gonna maximize my window a little bit more and just kind of reorganize just a little bit. So the first thing that we want is the Playmaker Editor. And again, I got that by going to Playmaker, Playmaker Editor. The second thing that we need in order to, that we're gonna be using all the time inside Playmaker, in addition to the Playmaker Editor, we can find under Playmaker, Editor Windows, and we're gonna look for the Action Browser. So these are the two primary windows that we need that we're gonna, we're gonna access all the time. Now, um, this actions window is floating. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the Playmaker tab. I'm going to grab the actions tab and I'm just dragging this and I'm going to nest it to the right side of my inspector. So I can see my inspector and to the right of it, I see actions. Now, alternatively, if you're tight on screen real estate, if you're working from a laptop, um, what I would recommend that you do is drag actions and snap it to the bottom of your inspector so that you can see the inspector at the top, actions at the bottom, and then you have this whole, most of the bottom dedicated to the Playmaker editor window. Um, you'll see very quickly that as we're gonna spend a lot of time when we're in development between these two windows. Um, I'm gonna move my actions uh, window back over next to the inspector. And this is really just so that I can get a sense of all the different categories of actions that are available. I'll talk about the, unit, uh, the, the Playmaker interface in the next video presentation, and we'll, we'll take a look at what these categories mean, and, and uh, we'll just kind of get a basic sense of what Playmaker is. Um, but before I do that, the last thing that I want to talk about is that we've modified our user interface inside Unity. So we've created a, a Playmaker window, uh, an Actions window, and I can save this layout. In the top right-hand corner, there's a layout drop-down menu. Uh, this will allow us to choose different layouts and, and uh, different views, but I'm gonna save my current layout. And this layout, I'm gonna call Playmaker, and I'll hit save. Now, the advantage of doing this is once we get Playmaker set up, you might find yourself in a situation where you interfere with your um, your interface and you inadvertently close some tabs or you move some things around and, and kind of are dragging stuff around and things look really kind of strange. Um, if we find ourselves in this situation, we can just go right back to our original uh, layout by going to the Playmaker dropdown menu. So, and that's a, a preference that will be saved. Um, we can go back to the default layout before Playmaker. And again, just to, to review that really quickly, if I want to configure Playmaker for an appropriate layout, the way that I recommend that you work is going to the Playmaker Editor. By going to the Playmaker drop-down menu, Playmaker Editor, I'm going to close the little splash screen. I'll drag Playmaker and snap it to the right side. I'm going to reconfigure these windows to kind of maximize my footprint of Playmaker down here. And also go to Playmaker, Editor, Windows, 
action browser. And from here, I'll just drag actions down. In this case, I'll just snap it to the bottom of inspector. So that's just a really kind of, you know, thorough overview of downloading, installing, and configuring. Uh, once we get the, our, our layout set up, I would recommend saving the layout. Uh, and from there, um, we'll, we'll jump into talking about the basics of Playmaker, but we'll do that in the next presentation.